Anapa, a quiet coastal city on the Black Sea, awoke under a sky that, although clear, seemed to offer no guarantee of calm. As the hours passed, the day turned gray and the first drops began to fall on the airport runways. In the air, the feeling of just another day settled in. The crew, experienced and accustomed to the summer routes in Russia, was ready to embark on a new journey, unaware that on the horizon loomed a storm far beyond anything any weather forecast could have predicted. August 22, 2006, Vityazevo Airport, Anapa, Russia. It's a few minutes past 2.30 p.m. in Anapa, and here, a Tupolev Tu-154M from the airline Pulkovo Aviation Enterprise is ready to begin taxiing toward its assigned runway for takeoff. Its destination, St. Petersburg, approximately two and a half hours away. On board are 160 passengers, 45 of them children, and 10 crew members. Most are families returning home after vacationing in this area known for its good beaches and affordable prices. Pulkovo was a Russian airline founded in 1932 as a division of Aeroflot for the city of St. Petersburg. In 1997, when it separated from Aeroflot, it became known as Pulkovo Aviation Enterprise. In October 2006, just a couple of months after the flight in question, Pulkovo ceased to exist following a merger with Rossiya Airlines, a state-owned Russian airline. At the controls was Captain Ivan Ivanovich Korogodin, 49 years old, with a total of 12,312 flight hours, 5,956 of those in two 154 aircraft. Beside him was First Officer Vladimir Vladimirovich Onishchenko, 59 years old, with a total of 11,876 flight hours, including 2,200 in this type of aircraft. Also in the cockpit were Andrei Nikolaevich Kodnovich, 23 years old, a trainee pilot with only 189 flight hours. The navigator, Igor Yuryevich Levchenko, 36 years old, with 7,848 hours. And the flight engineer, Viktor Petrovich Makarov, 51 years old. At 3 p.m., Pulkovo Flight 612 began taxiing toward its assigned runway for takeoff. At 3.05 p.m., they began accelerating down the runway. They lifted off without incident and began climbing toward their cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. Twenty minutes after takeoff, the plane is already stabilized at a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet, flying over southern regions of Russia. On the horizon, dense and threatening clouds begin to appear. Weather reports have warned of a severe storm along their northern route. In the cockpit, the crew consults the aircraft's weather radar, but the readings do not reflect the true intensity of the storm ahead. Five minutes later, turbulence begins to set in. Looks like this storm is a rough one. Yes, uh, if the turbulence gets worse, we'll request a change in altitude. And as the pilots had suspected, the turbulence worsened dramatically. It felt as though the storm, not the pilots, was in control of the aircraft. It kept lurching up and down, pushed upward by the air for a few seconds, then dropped again, tossed laterally or shaken violently. 
For the crew, it began to feel like hell. For the passengers, it became their worst nightmare. Rain began pounding the windows, and the crew urgently contacted the area controller. Polkovo 612, we request an urgent altitude change. We can't control the aircraft. Polkovo 612, the storm you're in spans from 5,000 to a ceiling of 49,000 feet. It's even worse lower down. I advise you to either divert or try climbing to see if conditions improve higher up. Roger, requesting climb to 390. Copy, cleared to climb to 390. At that moment, the pilots began climbing a few thousand more feet in hopes of finding some stability. The Tupolev 2154M has a technical ceiling of approximately 39,000 feet, but this limit depends on factors such as weight and atmospheric conditions. With the aircraft still heavy with fuel, the decision to attempt an additional climb compromised flight stability. Once they leveled off at 39,000 feet, they found that the storm was just as severe as it had been at 36,000 feet. However, now they were 3,000 feet higher, dangerously close to what is known as Coffin Corner. In this zone, it is difficult to maintain straight and level flight because the margins are extremely narrow. The aircraft's stall speed and its maximum allowable speed dangerously converge. The plane must remain within a very tight speed range and avoid exceeding these limits, as flying too fast or too slow will inevitably lead to an aerodynamic stall. And today, for the Topolev pilots flying at the aircraft's technical altitude limit, with a massive storm battering the plane, being in this coffin corner is more dangerous than ever. In the cockpit, the pilots struggle to maintain control as the storm engulfs the aircraft. The systems begin to warn of an impending aerodynamic stall, but the pilots do their best to keep the aircraft level. At 3.35 p.m., a powerful updraft pushes them upward for 10 seconds, lifting them above 41,000 feet. Then, just as suddenly, it shoves them back down to 39,000 feet. The overspeed alarms begin to sound. The captain tries to climb to reduce the speed, not knowing their actual altitude at that moment. The wind lifts them again, and the Tupolev reaches a pitch angle of 46 degrees. Then, unexpectedly, the indicated airspeed drops to zero. The aircraft, now at the mercy of the turbulent air currents, begins to fall like a 90-ton stone. In the blink of an eye, they drop to 36,000 feet. The captain tries to regain control but it's impossible. Without aerodynamic speed, every control input is useless. The first officer grabs the radio and sends out a mayday call, reporting that they are losing altitude. As they plummet, the pilots try everything they can to recover the aircraft, exchanging words in an effort to stay calm. But this quickly changes when they realize there's nothing more they can do. These were the final moments of panic captured by the cockpit voice recorder.
At 3.39 p.m., the plane crashed near the village of Sukhaya Balka in Ukraine. The impact was devastating. There were no survivors among the 170 people on board. Ukrainian emergency teams reached the crash site approximately an hour later, as the remote area made quick access difficult. The accident shocked both Russia and Ukraine and both nations declared official days of mourning. What had happened? What mistakes did the pilots make in this tragic accident? Approximately 260 rescue personnel arrived at the site, which was secured by authorities. The debris field stretched about 400 meters, Ukrainian emergency services confirmed that all 170 people on board had perished. Due to the massive force of the impact and the post-crash fires, rescuers believed it would be very difficult to identify most of the victims on site. The aircraft had crashed into a swampy area and disintegrated upon impact. The search for the black boxes, which had been halted overnight, concluded the following morning when both recorders were found and later transported to Moscow for analysis. The cause of the accident, once the data was analyzed, was a loss of control in manual flight mode at supercritical angles of attack, which led to an aerodynamic stall and a subsequent transition into a flat spin, ending in a high vertical speed impact with the ground. Contributing factors included poor crew coordination and failure to follow the aircraft flight manual instructions to avoid a stall. Additionally, the crew's training methods were deemed inadequate to handle the dangers encountered during manual flight at high altitudes. The Russian Interstate Aviation Committee, after an initial decoding of the flight recorder data, issued flight safety recommendations to avoid entering thunderstorms, adhere to maximum altitude limits based on aircraft load and outside air temperature, and improve pilot training so that crews can respond effectively in such situations. In summary, the pilots failed to accurately assess the dangers of flying their aircraft near its maximum altitude limit amid a thunderstorm with severe turbulence. After that, they made poor decisions, such as attempting to climb again when the overspeed alarm went off. They were unable to prevent the angle of attack from becoming dangerously high due to an upward gust of wind. Flying near or even above 40,000 feet, they went from exceeding the aircraft's maximum speed to entering a stall in a matter of seconds. Some locals still remember that day. One comment I read from a resident said, I remember that storm. It was hot and sunny. Then everything turned black skies, wind, rain, and hail. The plane crashed and the sun and heat came back. Thanks for sticking with us until the end, friends. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like or subscribing. It's completely free. See you next Friday with another story from aviation history.